Hey guys, it's Alex here, and today I've got another After Effects tutorial for you. And today I'm going to be doing the second part of my Element Glass um, animation, or whatever you would like to call it. So in the previous episode we did the uh, with the windows just breaking out, and now in this episode I want to show you how we can make all the pieces then come to form text, like so. And I think it looks really nice, and you know it's glass, it's reacting to the environment which is great. So I do have my clip here just all scaled up, getting rid of the bars and all that, so we can find that clip, uh, text clip, drag that into its new composition. And now we can um, duplicate this, just like we did in the last one. We can, this is going to be our environment layer, so we can add a fast blur to it, like so. And um, basically, in the last one, if you didn't see, um, I motion tracked it all and showed you how to do the thing with the grid. And basically, it's going to be exactly the same process. But what, to save time, I'm actually just going to copy the um, camera and that. And basically, I'll just show you if we were to make a new solid and also a new null object when call we will add a grid onto our solid like so make the null and the thing a 3d object and if we rotated our grid by 90 degrees on the x you can see basically because i've done oh that was the null my bad um go r 90 degrees, so this is just going to make it flat. You can see I've already done this before, and I've just lined it, tried to make it look like it's on the plane of the um, floor. So, yeah, so you, if I did, I went over it in the previous episode. So, yeah, from and now, because you can't actually fracture any text in Element, what you need to do is you need to get yourself a 3D program, such as Cinema 4D, 3DS Max, whatever. And we can make some text when it low object, and we can let's do reverse. And because it's glass, I'm going to make it quite thin, so only about eight. We can add some thinner caps, change this into the middle, and then we can also get some epic font such as Typograph Pro. So we have our basic text, very thin to make it look like glass. And from here, I'm going to use a plugin called Throusy. And now you will see that we've got to try and make lots of pieces because we need it to stretch around all of these windows. So I would recommend for a piece of text about 500, six, some, something very high pieces. And I would break all of those. And it depends on your clip. I mean, if you've got a lot of windows like I have and you need lots of pieces, because as you can see here, there are lots of pieces. Um, you're just gonna have to try and error really. Just see see how many you think you need and whatnot. So okay, but to save time, because it does take a long time to fracture, I'm actually just gonna use the one I used last time. I mean, we can make a new solid. Call this element. Okay, typing up element. Dragging that onto our solid. Come on, on you go. And we can go scene set up. Actually, first of all, set up our environment, custom layers, texture maps, and we pick that layer we put added the blur to for our environment. Environment, and then we just go custom layer there. Okay, and we can import, and I be this one here by the final. So we import that in. As you can see, we've got our text straight away. And we then can just drag on a glass material. It's in the basic material. So now you can see if we hold you can hold Alt and then just rotate around the environment will move as well. And you can see that's all reacting very nicely to it. You can click OK and that will import it in for us. And you can see we have it there. So I'm just going to go to group one particle uh, particle replicator rotation. You can turn this all the way around. Do we get something looking like that? I'm just going to go back, and I'm actually just going to see sort of the way I positioned it up. 
just to save time so you would want to mess around. Um, you can see that we've got a position here. Now how I got that was if you go back onto your uh, motion tracked, oh, I haven't motion tracked it, but basically you would have your motion tracked camera tracker or whatever you use to motion track it. You can see we've got nulls and I would want it to be about here. So what I can do is create a new null like that and then we can hit P on it and you can see we get a uh, position here. Now this obviously isn't the same one, but um, basically that gives us a null and you can then work it out from there and see what the position yeah so i mean it's just going to try the error so i mean with we can just push this back and then scale it up oh god um i just made that a 3d layer didn't i my bad okay and we can just scale that up hold shift to make it go faster and you're just going to want to scrub through until it looks like it's all staying in the right place. So I'm going to put that back to about 7,000 because if that's what I use, it's just going to be trying and error until it looks like it's sort of staying there. We can just adjust the rotation a bit. Bring that round. Move it into the middle. A tad up. Like so, yeah. I'm not going to spend too long on it. Oh and so we have our text now that isn't staying so I'm just going to look at what I used oh yeah I forgot that I um, hold up, I've changed all the position like a nutter I don't know where I got that oh it's probably oh yeah no because I moved it back oh you stupid alright yeah no that, that's why the, that's why the number with the nulls was so much different we just want to put that forward to about 3,500. Scale that down. Sorry, I was looking right at the start because we were going to want to move that back so it sort of looks like the scene we made earlier in the previous episode. And now that should look like it's staying there a lot better. Yeah, good. Okay. Let's check again. Okay, 3,000. Okay, alright, now we're set up. Now what we can do is we can go a bit forward and we can keyframe all the things we keyframe the last ones that's position x and y position z wind again press make sure multi object is enabled because this is going to allow us to change all the individual pieces we keyframe random rotation and also the scatter collapse this up tidy it up press u and now what we can do is turn up the random rotation again scatter it quite a lot and we can also actually go to the first one and we're actually going to do displace drop down and do displace x like so um, we can push this back in the z space we get a bit of movement of it coming forward and now it's just a matter of we're going to try and center this up first of all and then what we can do is we can use I'm just going to hit U again come on U, get the keyframes okay good and we can just displace it on the X so it stretches them all out and we're going to we can also put up the size just to make them slightly bigger so now we can bring that displace in a bit move it over to the left turn the scatter a bit more so yeah, you just want to mess around with the position, get it looking good, and then as you can see, all of the pieces then look like they come forward and form this text, which I think is pretty cool. Like so, I'm just going to try and mess around with the position a bit more. As you can see, that's basically how you do it, and then obviously you just duplicate your layer, mask it around, I showed you how to do that in the first episode, mask out the bin here for the container or whatever and yeah that is how you do it so that is basically the end of this tutorial also what you could do is um, I forgot to mention this in the uh, last episode you could create maybe a new light uh, you can make it a parallel light just gonna give it some nice highlights uh, can zoom out a bit make it in the center drag it up a bit like that 
it's going to give it a nice highlight and then also just to brighten everything up a bit we can add a new light and make it an ambient light and that again just going to brighten everything up a bit more and make it looking nice and again we can uh, go a keyframe assistant ease these ones out because the animation is going out so it's going to make it go slow at the start and speed up and we can also go keyframe assistant and then ease these ones in because the animation is ending so it's going to go slow and then just slowly ease into it looking nice and yeah that's all motion dragged into the scene and that is basically how I do it now I don't want you just to sort of copy all of this um, basically how I see tutorials is you learn the techniques and then you but you imply it in your own way so you adapt it to make your own way I don't I hate it when I see people copy the exact same thing from a tutorial because it doesn't make anything original and um, you know so you just want to adapt it yourself I think the scale could probably go up on these you know just just try and mess around with it there's so much things you can do within an element um, I absolutely love the thing and the great thing is that all of that animating was done on you know that many keyframes and on one layer as well I mean that I think that's pretty good so yeah that is the tutorial guys I hope you enjoyed um, uh, please remember to drop a like that would be great for me and uh, yeah I will see you on the next one keep your tutorial requests coming it's great and thanks a lot for watching see ya